Hi, I'm Andrew at Baker's Gas. We're here today with the all-new Trailblazer 330 from Miller. So in this video, I got a couple of demo units, as you can see, sitting behind me here. Um, we have a 265 next to the Trailblazer 330. Uh, so the 265 is also new, but the 330 is the newest addition out. Uh, there's multiple options you can get in this unit, but in this video today, we're going to go over its functionality, what it does, some of the options you can get on it, and uh, just the overall intake of the unit. So. Before we jump in, I just wanted to tell you, we, we got two on the floor here, um, and those are both 330s, but they have different options, and we'll talk about that. This one here, though, is uh, pretty well optioned up. I, I should say it's a little bit higher dollar unit. Um, but on the new 330, so you can get 330 amps at 32 and a half volts, 100% duty cycle. It's a 12,500 watt generator output, um, and pretty nice unit. These actually, I noticed one thing right out of the rip, these actually stay up, which is awesome. Um, I really like that. But you got your negative stud here, your positive stud here, and then we got 240 volt plug, two 240 volt plugs. So this is the traditional, been on every Trailblazer for many, many years. This is a newer um, 240 style plug, and and if you notice, this plug matches all of their 110, 220 equipment. So you can run a, a Multimatic 220 on this, and it will power up with this unit. So just, that's why that plug's there, just a reference, just to let you know. So we'll shut them, then we got 110 plugs here, GFCI, and then this unit particularly has Excel Power. So Excel Power is gonna give you generator power at low idle speeds. So it's gonna give you, you can run a grinder, a light, anything like that. So if you have an older jet, Trailblazer that doesn't have Excel Power, you notice when you hit that trigger on your grinder, it automatically jumps to high idle. This one, it stays at a lower idle, saves up to 52% fuel cost savings, is what the math came out to be, right? But that's just running tools and that. I know a lot of people that just use these for running stuff like that, so that's an awesome, awesome option to have. Shut them down. This unit too has jump start battery charge capability, so it comes off on that plug there. Um, we'll link the accessory for the cable below. It does not come with the cable. Just so you know, just to be sure. This unit, these new Trailblazers now, and you've noticed here, is a uh, seven pin connector, so it's a direct connect to a spool gun. So there is no more WC24 or the turtle, they call them, uh, in between your spool gun and your engine drive. Direct connect. <coughs> we got our 14 pin here connection. Um, that's just for uh, you know, remotes, right? You can put a remote to adjust your amperage, or you can put a foot pedal on there if you're going to take well, that sort of thing. USB for updates. This is our selector switch here. We'll go to the home, we'll go to the main menu here real quick, and we'll go home. Sorry. And then go right back to process. So we have our buttons up here. It is not a touch screen. And if you noticed, if you watched my last one of my videos about we breaking the screen and replacing it, it's very easy to do yourself, um, very easy to do in the field, and it's actually a very robust screen. Took a long time to, for me to break it, but here's the options that this has in the process control. So stick electrode 6010, 7018, GMAW and FCAW, so MIG and flux core, self-shielded flux core. Here's your spool gun option, your TIG option, and then carbon arc cutting or carbon arc gouging. So this thing is rated to do carbon arc cutting. Uh, we'll go right up to stick, select that, run 6010, and then obviously we control our amperage on that, with that same knob. We'll go into weld setting. You can control arc control. We can do, you just gotta click on it, and then it, you can make it stiff or soft. We'll leave it at zero. Your dig range, zero to 100. And then, leave it there, hot start, one to zero, we're gonna leave it at 0.5. Stuck stick, so when stuck stick is on, controls when you stick the electrode, oh, sorry, I went too fast there. When you control the, when you stick the electrode, it automatically cuts power to that electrode. When it's off though, that means it's going to continue to throw the amperage through that stick electrode and you'll smoke the stick electrode. So it's kind of a neat little feature to have. And then obviously your remote, 
and turn that off and on. But that's for your remote control pendant to, to control the amperage in that. So going back to the other options you can get on this unit on the floor here, if it has this little bubble up top, it means it has a pendant or auto remote start with amperage control on the pendant. And that's where that would come into play with the remote. So this one, this one has jump start, remote, and Excel power. So this is a much higher dollar option out unit too. Um, but there, there's many options, and we'll link them all down below so we can, you guys can pick the best one that you want. And then obviously, we're just going to go into menu, and we can do system settings, and you can turn on a lot of different stuff. So voltage reducing device, cable link compensation. We're gonna enable that because what it does is it calculates how much feet is in between your leads and then it bumps up your amperage or voltage depending on the length of cable run. So all these new trailblazers too, they have arc reach. So if you already have a suitcase feeder that has arc reach, it'll run on this unit um, and arc reach, then weld lead compensate or calibration. We're gonna enable that. So it's gonna, there again, calculate the length of lead and your weld puddle, what you have set here, and it's going to compensate for it, the length and the environment. So you long arc or short arc, whatever your style welding you're doing there, personally to the welder, it's going to adjust for it. Cable length, you can tell it how many, how much length the cable. Now that includes positive and negative, so you got to remember that. You can tell cable size. So whether you're going to run two out, let's just see what that goes up to. All goes all the way up to four out. So pretty common to run two. And then we can control screen brightness. And that's on 10. We can go down to one, back up to 10. So that's pretty cool. Let's go into more info. So it turns on uh, voltage reducing device, lowers open circuit voltage to approximately 18 volts. That's new to this series too. We're just going to leave it at that. CLC, I talked about that cable length compensation, weld lead calibration, cable lead length, uh, that's the total positive and negative, kind of going over that again. Cable size, you tell it, and then obviously screen brightness. Go back, go back. This thing's unique too because it goes into maintenance, so it tells you how much engine oil life you got left, when to change the filter, when to change the air filter, and it gives you a depiction of when you should change those fuel filter battery terminals tells you when to take a look at those spark plug when to change that and brushes so it's pretty pretty unique that it's telling you all that stuff we're going to go back again system info so this goes over your, all your downloads that you could do if there's any updates uh, reset air log factory resets right there engine hours um, goes over all that stuff Pretty, pretty nice. Productivity tells you how many arc on hours and how much idle time this thing sees. Um, and then how much auxiliary power it also sees. That's pretty cool. And then you can tune it or program it for job one, job two, multiple job numbers. And then troubleshooting. So when the, when the engine drive is running, it's gonna give you engine RP, RPM, voltage, current, output, everything in live time in front. So just for troubleshooting the engine drive, um, we're going to go all the way back. So we, we went over weld settings and we're going to go into the battery charge. So this is unique to this one, not all of them come with it. You can jump start or charge 12 volt or 24 volt systems. And really you just pick it and click. And what happens is when, it, when it's all hooked up and it's running, it's going to show you how many amps it's putting out and then it's going to be in the green. And then you just hit stop and it will stop the charging system so pretty awesome the uh, another good thing about the, the fuel tanks up front on these um, I can, I'll walk around to this side here we got our air filter oil dipstick up top uh, they changed the shape of the door it's, I mean it's pretty nice it's very similar to the old style but a little bit different on the side here very compact and the fuel is on the other side, but the actual tank is in the bottom of the engine drive. So pretty nice there. Got a tailpipe on there. Other than that, very small compared to some of the older Trailblazers. Now the, the old 325, similar size, but the new three, you know, the, the old ones, the 302s, 
and all the ones before that, they're much longer. I don't know if anybody remembers those, much, much longer. Um, but these ones have shrunk weight, size, width, so now they're gonna fit in tighter spots and you've got more power output at 100% duty cycle. So all in all, they've just made them better and better. Now, one of the biggest things that we hear about is the screen. Everybody, why do we, I, I don't want a glass screen, I don't want a big LCD, it's gonna break, it's gonna happen. We're gonna link my video down there. I broke the screen on this unit here. I, I wouldn't be worried about that screen. It's, it's heavy duty, it's robust. I, I, there's nothing I would be worried about on these units. Um, they're very, they're flawless when using them, and obviously user interface is, is easy, so it's easy setup, whether you're a novice or you're a senior in the, on the job. I mean, I'm telling you, it's easy to set up. There's very, walk through it by yourself. But if you've got any questions, comments, please leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for some more. to me, so I'm going to tell you what we're going to try. We're, they say it'll, it'll hold up pretty good. I mean, I smacked that and it didn't break. I, you guys saw that, right? I, I hit it pretty hard too, but let's try the end of the ball peen. I mean, if we can't get it to break. So, it's pretty... Okay, there we go. We got it to break on that one. You saw how hard I was hitting that screen.